The Offsprout theme is a new kind of WordPress theme. A typical WordPress theme dictates exactly what your headers, footers, sidebars, and other site-wide content areas are going to look like. These areas are usually built by the code itself, and you, as the designer, are maybe given a few options to customize it. A WordPress theme also may have a few traditional WordPress page templates. These control the content area and can dictate whether the page includes something like a sidebar. But there are problems with that. What happens if you need to add an element to the header that isn't available in the options, like a phone number to call? What happens if you want to add a hero area to standard pages? What happens if you want one sidebar on some pages and another sidebar on other pages? The minute the demands of a site start to get complex, the traditional WordPress themes start to fail. That's why Offsprout lets you do all of this in a completely revolutionary and intuitive way using what we call structures. Think of Offsprout structures as a way to build WordPress themes on the fly, all without code. In this video, we're going to build four different structures for our site. The first is a default structure that we can use for our homepage and most other pages. The second is a landing page structure. The third is a structure for our blog posts. And the final structure is for blog archive pages like categories. Let's get to work. Here we have a new site with some blog posts. Since we don't have any structures right now, Offsprout detects that and prompts us to create one. So let's create our first structure. You can see here that the structure has a default header and footer. Let's replace those with some built-in Offsprout templates. Keep in mind, these templates are here to help you work faster, but can be customized however you want, if need be. Now let's save that structure. You can see that our site now has a header and footer. But wait, now that I'm seeing it, I think I want my navigation menu to be a little bigger. We can go to Edit, Edit Structure, and we're brought back to the screen to edit the structure for the current page. Let's make that change to the navigation. Now let's save that and go back to our page. When we refresh, we can see that the structure now has our design edit. Great, let's build our second structure for a landing page. First, let's create the landing page. and we'll publish that real quick. You can see that our landing page still has navigation and a footer that probably has too much information, like social buttons. This can hurt our conversions. So let's create a new structure without those things. We can use our first structure as a starting point. Let's delete the header that we have now and replace it with a simple logo. And we also want to simplify our footer. Let's actually replace that footer with a more simple footer template. Great, let's save that. And now let's go back to our landing page. You can see that it still has our first structure applied to it. Let's fix that by going to Edit, Apply New Structure, and choosing our new structure. Sweet! Our landing page is ready to convert. 
Okay, now we have some blog posts. Let's see what they look like right now. Not great. We need to create a structure for our blog posts. But first, let's go to our initial default structure. We're going to want to use this header and footer in our blog post structure, so let's save them as globals. That ensures that when we make an edit to the header in one structure, it will still apply to the other structures where this global is used. Let's also save the footer as a global. Let's save that. Now we're ready to create our blog post structure. Again, let's use that initial structure that we made as the starting point. You can see that we have those globals in the header and footer. If I made a change to the header here, it would also change the header in the initial global. Let's keep that header as is for now. Now, for this blog post structure, let's create a hero area with the featured image post title, and post date. In order to create our hero area, we're going to use the connector. So let's first create the post title. We'll use a heading module for that, and we'll connect it to the post title. Then, underneath that, we'll add the post date. And finally, we'll design the background of the hero area. Notice that we select an image for the background, use the featured image, and then add a background screen to improve legibility. Cool, so the hero area is done. Now let's also create a sidebar with a call to action and some testimonials for social proof. And finally, let's add some padding to this main content area. All right, that's looking pretty good now. Let's save it and see what an actual post looks like.
Notice that our post is still using the default structure. That's because we haven't applied our new structure to this post. We can do this by applying the structure to the post like so. But that would mean that we would have to apply the structure to all posts individually. So let's go back and set it to the default structure again. And instead, let's set our blog post structure as the default for all blog posts. To do that, we can open the menu and go to Structures, Set Defaults. Then we can set our blog post structure as the default for blog posts. Now let's save that and then refresh the page. Very nice. Our blog post is now using the default blog post structure that we just created. For our final structure, let's create an archive page. Archive pages are the pages that display all posts in a given category or written by a given author. For this, we probably want to have a similar display to our main blog page, so let's go to the blog page. Now let's save our blog module as a template. Good, now let's create our new structure. For this one, we want to delete this content module. Since the archive page has automatically generated content, we don't need it. Now, let's put our blog post template here instead. We should configure this posts module to use the main query of the page. That will make it look for the default WordPress query for the archive, which is what we want. We'll also give this page a title, again using the heading module with the connector to grab the post title, which will be the category name or the author for our archives. Okay, we're done. Let's save it and set that as the default structure for archive pages. Now, let's go to our blog and click on a category to see what the archive looks like. Perfect! So in this video, you've seen how to create structures for your site. We created a default structure and landing page, blog post, and archive structures. As I'm sure you can tell, structures open up a whole new way to build your website and are an incredibly powerful tool to have in your toolbox. Don't build your next website without them. Offsprout. Don't just build websites, build your business.